Hello YouTube, in this video we are going to go over the Aatrox matchup and how you should optimally play it as Gangplank. Before we begin, I want to say that I really appreciate the feedback I've been getting on these matchup videos. It made me realize that I tend to overlook or even forget to explain certain important parts of the laning. Things like barrel placements and wave management are so ingrained into my brain that I sometimes uh, forget to talk about it. That's why my goal in this video is going to be to try a different approach and hopefully not miss out on anything important. Like always, if you're left with any questions or uncertainties, just leave them in the comment below. Now let's get started with the Aatrox matchup. Now the rune you want to take for Aatrox is Fleet Footwork. Fleet is the key to this matchup and what makes it actually playable. One of Aatrox's biggest counters is movement speed. And by taking Fleet as Gangplank, you now have three different ways to be able to get free movement speed, which will help you keep distance and escape potential death combos. Fleet sustain together with Absorb Life also keeps you safe from entering a health percentage where one more Aatrox combo will kill you. Usually this is around 40 and 60%. You want to simply avoid being at this health percent and always aim to be as healthy as possible. Now let's start with the level 1 against Aatrox. Level 1, there are two types of Aatrox players. There's the Aatrox player that fights and contests your barrels, and there are Aatrox players who play defensively and do nothing. Now for the level 1, it's worth to note that Aatrox isn't the strongest champion. You should look to win the barrel timings if they are contested, and then use the movement speed to reset. Aatrox's Q1 and Q2 are fine to tank in the early game, because they have low damage. But you should always get out of his range before his Q3 comes out. You also never want to take a prolonged fight against Aatrox. After he gets his Conqueror stacks, you are doomed to lose. Make every interaction you have with him a short one. At level 2, once the Aatrox player unlocks his E, he will either use his E to dodge your barrel defensively, going sideways or backwards, if he does this, this gives you a window to walk up and harass with your Q. The difficulty in this matchup starts when he uses his E aggressively. You always want to answer with a barrel. The two key things for this interaction are, first, your barrel placements. Sit on top of your barrel as long as possible and anticipate it. Don't panic and blow up your barrel too early, for no reason. This will give him freedom to walk up and combo you. Your barrel is what will keep you safe from any big combo. And the second thing is your positioning. You want to treat Aatrox as a range champion and always stand a little further than his Q1 plus E range. This is the optimal distance to play the matchup since it's hard for him to follow up with anything after. So I've now explained how you should trade and interact with Aatrox. But what should your goal be in this matchup? Well, just like in most matchups, your goal is to just scale and get your items. Aatrox is not a champion you can 1v1. Never get baited by Aatrox who is low HP. Always treat Aatrox at any HP as an unkillable monster, especially when he has ulti. You're better off always playing defensively in this matchup. Once you get your items, escaping his combos and kiting him becomes a lot easier. Alright, now that we got the theoretical side out of the way, let's look at some practical examples of how to play the Aatrox matchup. I have two games here that we're gonna watch together and I'm gonna commentate over it. I've won a high elo game where I'm playing versus Nail. I think we were both around six, uh, 700 LP Grandmaster. And then the second game that we're going to watch after this, uh, where I play against a Diamond 2 Aatrox. So let's start with the, the game versus Nail. Um, you see here level 1 that he uh, is already contesting my barrels by using his Qs. Once his Q is on cooldown, he will obviously, he's obviously like backing off. I decide not to fast push, even though he's giving me full control over the wave. I just want to last hit. So here, I'm going to walk up for this cast minion. Uh, he then walks up with his passive and starts hitting me with his Qs. I then return with a barrel. He uses his level 2 timer to E in and uh, outspace that last auto, which makes him win the trade. He then wins the barrel timing. The lane is slowly becoming a little bit rough here. So I have to use my potion. I put this barrel defensively because I want to keep uh, farming up with my Q. When his Q and his E are up, you cannot look for melee last hits, you want to last it with your Q and barrels. Here I'm out of barrels, so he walks past my minion wave and uh, decides, tries to combo me. 
I can now walk back since his abilities are on cooldown. I have a biscuit, so I'm still healthy enough here to get some more last hits. He's waiting for his cooldown, so I walk back. I win that barrel timing. I'm forced to go for this trade. Forced to recall and use my TP. I decide to buy boots since boots since movement speed is like very important against Aatrox. He now has TP advantage and he's gonna crash his wave and he's looking to reset after obviously. He resets, comes back to the lane, and I'm now building a slow push into him. This is a not so good situation for me, because um, he has an insane item advantage. He has a full pickaxe while I'm only sitting on boots. Uh, we both are close to our level 6 timers, so I was planning here to look for a fight with my uh, ulti. But he gets level 6 before me, and then uh, I die. I still get my level 6 off. Or like I still collect a minion for my level 6. Um, the reason why I went for that minion is because if I die here, well, I was I knew I was going to die, right? But uh, if he decides to crash the wave after, uh, I can at least ulti it. So sometimes it's fine to die if you have your ulti up, because you know he can collect the wave after. It's only fine to ult uh, like your wave stop lane. Um, you just sometimes... You just want to try to avoid it, right? But sometimes sometimes you have no choice to die and uh, ult, the, ult the wave after. I actually don't have to ult the wave here. Um, I'm able to just walk back and collect it. But he does have uh, an XP lead now. A very important thing that I want every Gangplank player to take note of is that you can use three barrels to insta-push um, a cannon wave. You can use two barrels to push a regular wave and uh, you need to use three barrels to insta-push a cannon wave. Which basically guarantees the crash. He then uh, crashes the wave and now we're pushing back to uh, his side of the lane. Um, here I actually look for an aggressive barrel. You see that I placed it behind him. Um, that's because my joiner is topside so I just kind of want to chunk him out. Uh, I was able to get out his ulti, and then my jungler comes in to get out his flash. So even if it may look like I'm trying to kill him there, my goal is not that. My Graves then goes for the Grubs. Um, but this doesn't work out. Um, something I want to also mention, like share with you guys, is that you should not listen to your jungler uh, if he wants to make plays topside. Uh, in the gangplank Aatrox matchup, it will always favor Aatrox. Like the two v two will always favor Aatrox um, because he just has so much more freedom um, to do what he wants against gangplank. I have no forms of CC, nothing to like hold him back, and the gangplank is just not that strong early. And once Atros gets a reset, it's basically over, so... He now has a full Eclipse, which means he can like uh, look for aggressive poke under my tower. You really want to minimize the damage you take here. You want to just last hit with uh, Qs and Barrels. For the next wave, he's not gonna push it because he knows that I'm just gonna play safe under my tower. So he's trying to instead keep the wave uh, in the middle here and look for a combo, or like look for a death combo basically, because he has Eclipse, so he can basically one shot me. But you see the distance that I'm keeping here. He goes for the cannon, and I punish him with a triple barrel. You can now see that I actually have a pretty big uh, health advantage, 
but it does it still doesn't mean that I'm able to um, kill him My jungler here is top side, so he's able to uh, pick up the kill. I then reset for Triforce and play the seal caps. I feel my barrel combo here. The key to poking out Aatrox is you do not want to pop your barrels until he uses his E. You always want to sit, uh, you, you always want to keep a barrel between you and Aatrox and only use a second barrel when he uses his E because otherwise he can just uh, dodge your barrel for free. Once again, same situation, he does not want to push in the wave and give me the farm for free, so he's forcing me to miss some minions. I accept this fact and just keep a, a very long distance from him. When the wave is pushing back to you, you do not want to use the barrel here. You can see that I have two barrels sitting there, but I'm not gonna destroy them. Because I don't want to uh, be in a situation where I, my lane is pushing back to him. Um, I end up getting Freeman Dove here. They After this, they uh, summon the Rift Herald and take two towers top lane. Which basically ends the laning phase for this match. You can see that I went pretty even with Aatrox for most part uh, until I get until I got Dove. Now onto the second game here. We're playing against the Diamond Two Aatrox on the NA server. I actually messed up my uh, barrel combo here and wasn't able to punish him. Still have level 2 prior so I can start spamming Q here. The reason why I walk up here for auto attacks is because he is still level 1. My goal now is to respect any jungle gank and uh, crash the wave. Use the fleet movement speed to dodge his uh, Q. Once his Q is on cooldown, you can sit inside of the wave safely. And here I'm able to crash it. I decide not to reset here. You can decide to reset, but uh, it's always better to get extra credit while you have enough health and mana. The wave is not going to slow push back to me. He actually uh, takes a reset here, which I don't really understand why. Because um, he did not crash his wave, so you see that the wave is now frozen here. Um, he took a very bad reset, and I think he even walks back to the lane. Which eventually uh, ends up in me having a one lead uh, advantage. Because here you see I'm level 5 to his level 4. You see there that he is in, so I'm able to hit the barrel. I will not win any trades because obviously he has a longsword extra here and I'm sitting on 1.2k gold. My goal here is to just get as many minions until I'm pushed out of lane basically. Uh, 
I go for a very, very aggressive trade here because I know I will reset after. So I'm just trying to get his HP as low as possible before resetting. I reset and TP back with Sheen and Boots. He also resets and buys another Longsword and Boots. My wave here is very big, so it's not that hard to crash this, especially since he's uh, walking back. I stand inside of the wave so he cannot hit me with a W here. Managed to get in uh, the crash. Then get some poke here under the tower. He goes uh, for an all-in here, but I know I can walk away because his W is not up. He even burns his flash. His W comes up now, so I'm trying to sidestep it. He still hits it, but he has no follow-up anymore after using his Qs. I'm able to hit a barrel combo here. He didn't expect it. Still trying to keep the, the longest distance. You see that the distance I'm keeping is forcing him to use his E with his Q1. Um, now he has no Q, uh, E, so I can do a two-piece uh, combo there and crash the wave. Um, after crashing that wave, I actually uh, get the river plant and we take the grubs. I then go back to my lane to collect the wave. I see Aatrox in the bush, so I get a free barrel here plus Q. My genre is topside, so after baiting his QE, we just get a free kill here. I actually kind of make a mistake here because after killing him, I decide to take the plate, uh, take two plates actually for my Triforce. Um, but this is this was very greedy for me because I don't even have my TP. So I try to like sneak in a recall, but he comes back and uh, cancels it. Which then forces me to stay in lane. So he then pushes in a, a big wave and I just uh, collect it safely under my tower. Then important to notice here is that he's not pushing in the wave anymore and my TP is coming back up. So I have a chance here to recall and buy my items. I see an opportunity in bot lane so I actually uh, use my ulti and TP on bot lane. Here we have the same situation as in the previous match, where um, they're trying to make a play on top side. I prioritize pushing in the wave. Um, I see that the play is not going to work out here because they sent their support as well. Um, like I said, Aatrox versus Gangplank in the top side does not favor uh, your team at all. You want to try not to ruin your lane by uh, forfeiting your life for these plays. Always look at the wave and uh, make sure that you either collect a wave or crash it before trying to make a play. I now have a Triforce and a pretty big uh, lead because he doesn't even have his Eclipse yet. So I'm able to start playing aggressively here and uh, poke him under his tower.
Then their mid laner decides to gank me. I get away safely, and then my jungler is there to back me up. I keep up the pressure by crashing another wave and using my bros to poke him. He then eventually is forced to recall. And I'm able to take the tower. That concludes the laning phase for this match. I hope you were able to learn something from it. If you're still left with any questions, leave them in the comment below. And I'll see you in the next video.